Many students find the immunodeficiency section to be very, very challenging. I really don't think it has to be that way. I don't think it has to be that way because there's just not a lot to know for each of these diseases. It seems challenging because they are very, very small, small IgGs, IgM, IgA, IgE. They all sound with the words Ig. That's like kind of complicated, right? You know. So IgE. IgE, IgA, oh, IgGs, and IgGs. Well, IgGs can be common variable immunodeficiency, can be common variable immunodeficiency. It can be X linked A gamma globulinemia, so called Bruton's A gamma globulinemia. And we can also have a little chronic granulomatous disease. A little chronic granulomatous disease. So these things here, they seem so complicated, don't they? I mean, they're so small. But it's not as bad as we think. Severe combined immunodeficiency. Let's put them all on the board at the same time, and that won't seem so complicated. So which of these present as infections? All of them. Well, which type of infection? Let's do the easy one. IgE is staph of the skin. Staph of the skin and skin of the staph. Chronic pustular hyper IgE syndrome, hyper IgE syndrome. And this is staph of the skin, cold abscesses. And common variable immunodeficiency, why is it called variable? It's called variable because sometimes it presents at a young age, sometimes it presents at an older age, and so it's so variable. And also the amount of the IgE levels, IgA levels, IgG levels, the variable levels of this, and that's why it's called variable. It's variable because the presentation sometimes is young, sometimes could be 25 and 30. Whereas X-linked always starts in male children because it is X-linked and congenital. Well, what if we had two children, one with common variable, one with X-linked? How would you tell them apart? Well, they both present with chronic sinopulmonary infections. Sinuses, ears, nose, ears, nose, lung, ears, nose, lung, ears, nose, lung. Both of them have a low level of IgG. Ear, nose, lung, ear, nose, lung. Both of them are treated by treating the specific infection and giving intravenous immunoglobulins. Both of them can be treated with giving specific intravenous immunoglobulins. Both of them have a low IgG level. So then what's the difference then? And the difference between them Besides the fact that H-linked aglomaglobulinemia presents in male children and common variable can be older, the big difference between these is that common variable has B cells, but they don't make immunoglobulins. X-linked has no B cells. So if you don't have B cells, how can you make immunoglobulins? Common variable has tonsils, has adenoids, but they don't make the B cells. They don't make the immunoglobulins. Here you don't have the tonsils. You don't have the adenoids. You don't have the immunoglobulins because you don't make the equipment. And if you don't have the equipment, you don't make the immunoglobulins. Common variable has lymph nodes, but they don't make immunoglobulins. X-linked agammaglobulinemia does not have the lymph nodes. So the difference between these is that X-linked agammaglobulinemia, right from being a child, has no equipment, no B cells, no tonsils, no adenoids, no nodes. You don't have immunoglobulin, you get infections, you treat with intravenous immunoglobulins. Common variable has the equipment, but doesn't make anything. Has the equipment, but doesn't make anything. Is there a difference between having erectile dysfunction and having no penis? This is not having the equipment. But recurrent sinopulmonary infections is the same for both of them. Now, IgA deficiency gives a person who's got anaphylaxis when they get blood that has IgA, has Giardia infections, has celiac disease, celiac, celiac 
GRD, celiac, GRDA, anaphylaxis, IgA deficiency. And the other thing about IgA deficiency is that when you treat it and you go of intravenous immunoglobulins, it actually can make it worse because it, intravenous immunoglobulins has a small amount of IgA in it. So there's nothing that can be done for IgA deficiency. Doesn't that just suck? That doesn't seem very right, does it? There's nothing that can be done for IgA deficiency? No, there's not. IVIG makes it worse. Anaphylaxis, when you get blood with IgA in it, giardia, celiac, atopic disease. IgA, hyper-IgE, hyper-IgE, staph and skin and skin and staph, Job syndrome. Severe combined immunodeficiency means no B cells or T cells. So you're like a person who's HIV positive who also has X-linked A gamma globulinemia. And that sucks, doesn't it? Severe combined. What is the combined in the severe combined? What's combined in the severe combined? And that is having no B cells, no T cells. So it's like having no B cells and being HIV positive at the same time. So you have to use the same trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole that you use for pneumocystis prophylaxis at the same time that you might use intravenous immunoglobulins for bacterial infections. It's like being an HIV positive person with common variable. Like being an HIV positive person who's got X-linked gamma globulinemia. Wow, severe combined. That's what's combined. Chronic granulomatous disease, very hard disease. Nitro blue tetrazoleum test. Nitro blue tetrazoleum test is what we're doing to look at the deficiency of the NADPH oxidative burst in your neutrophils. It's like you have neutrophils, but your neutrophils are not cooking anything. Your neutrophils are not able to make anything. They're not able to make the alien juice to sizzle the bacteria because your T cells are there, your B cells are there, but uh, neutrophils are not making the oxidative burst. So this is like a neutrophil that just is not producing anything, not making the oxidative burst, not cooking the cells, nitro blue tetrazoleum test, and also you have suppurative nodes. You have nodes that are so disgusting that they're bursting forward with purulent material they're bursting forward with purulent material, bursting through those nodes with catalase positive organisms, Burkhold area aspergillus, Pseudomonas aspergillus, Pseudomonas aspergillus. What does Pseudomonas and aspergillus have in common? They are catalase positive. And with chronic granulomatous disease, you're missing the oxidative burst. The oxidative burst is what allows neutrophils to kill bacteria. And if you don't have that oxidative burst, you don't have NADPH, you can't cook the bacteria, you get Pseudomonas and Burkhold area, and you get Aspergillus and Pseudomonas pouring out of your lymph nodes, separating lymph nodes, exploding with pus for catalase positive organisms because your neutrophils don't cook bacteria. It's like having a microwave that doesn't turn on. See you in the next section.